Hey guys, it's Shanna. Welcome back to my channel. I made this vlog because someone asked a question about how I am studying for the USMLE Step 1 as a Canadian medical student. If you don't know, the USMLE Step 1 is actually made for American medical students and it's a exam they take after their second year going into third year that they have to do and they have to do uh, three different steps, so three different exams, step one, step two, step three, and for us. In Canada, we have our own exams. I think they're called the MCCQE, um, parts one and two, and those are for our medical license. Um, but some of us, including me and some of my classmates, um, are also choosing to write the USMLE in case we want to pursue fellowship opportunities, which is training after medical school, after residency, or work in the future down in the States. Um, and so for me, that I'm considering fellowship and then possibly working um, because I'm not super sure what I want to do or where I want to work exactly. So I just wanted to have a few doors open. It's not that common, honestly, to write, though. I would say most of our class is not writing it because there is really no need to if you're intending to stay in Canada. Um, but there are some fields of medicine where there's, um, there's a limited number of fellowships in Canada, and so you might want to be considering the states. And so I would consider that a lot of surgical specialties. I think a lot of people in my class that are writing it are the kind of people who are leading a bit more towards surgery, but even uh, people that are considering an internal medicine field are also, are also considering to write that because there's some good fellowships there. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much it. There, there's a lot of decision making that goes into writing it. I really kind of flipped back and forth between deciding whether or not I wanted to write it because I do want to stay in Canada if I can. But I just like having more options. Um, so originally my test, so in terms of like timeline, I originally had my test scheduled for May 23rd. Um, and then today is like May 6th or whatever. I'm losing track of dates. Um, and it was supposed to be quite soon. And I was studying right after, um, I think for a couple months. And so, um, but because of COVID and everything, it's been uh, moved all the way to July 2nd. So that would probably give me in total th three months of study time, I think. I was intending to study more during the school year, and I did a little bit here and there. To, but to be honest, medical school itself is quite busy already. And then if you also do things like research and extracurriculars on the side, then you it's really hard to find time, I think, to study for STEP at the same time. Um, whereas it's a little bit different, I think, in American schools. I don't go to American medical school, so someone else can correct me if I'm wrong. I believe they get time specifically dedicated. I think it's called dedicated for them to study for the step one exam, whereas in Canada, we don't get that. Um, and actually, normally right now, I should still be in school and doing school things, but I have a bit of extra time now that we're off clinicals and stuff. And so, um, yeah, I think in terms of writing it, though, a good time to write it is the summer after your second year of medical school. I think writing it the summer after first year would not be good because a lot of the, you, it's really content heavy. It's not like the SAT. It's, it's, I would say it's even harder to consider the MCAT in terms of you actually need the content that you learn in medical school. It tests all those first two, year of con first two years of content. And so I think writing it first year would not be, you would just not know enough. There's just so much knowledge to take in. I think this is a really good time to write it if, if that's available to you. I think it's, it's harder. It's different if you're in a three-year medical school program, but for a four-year medical school program, this is perfect kind of to writing at the same time that the American students would be writing it anyways. I would, I so I chose May 23rd originally because I wanted to write it early, get it over with, and then actually have a summer before I started clerkship because I think studying all the way up to the point that I started clerkship would probably be really tiring and I don't want to do that. I think it's good to have a relaxation break. Um, I mentioned in my high school to medical school journey that I studied for my MCAT all the way up to July 28th and then I just went all the way and worked on my medic school applications all the way up to the, I think when school started and so I was pretty tired and exhausted and I think I would have appreciated having like an actual vacation and an actual break so that's something I considered when I was scheduling my date but here I am I've scheduled July 2nd 3rd actually 3rd I keep saying 2nd but uh, me and my classmate chose it together uh, considering that we go back to our kind of clerkship on July 6th but we do some like um, online self-studying so it's a little bit more relaxed and so we thought that's a good amount of time to do that I kind of a little bit debating whether or not I actually want to write my test even earlier but that's where it stands I think a lot of people recommend six to eight weeks as a good amount of time to study um, 
by talking to some upper year um, friends who wrote, wrote this, wrote the step one, they recommended four weeks was actually enough if you had a good knowledge base from first year. Um, and so that's why I chose my original date. So I think, um, I don't really feel super qualified to say like what is going to work, how much studying is needed until after I write my exam. But per request, I just wanted to just tell you guys what I'm doing. Um, maybe it'll help somebody and then I'll maybe re I'll release another video to update like what worked and what didn't and what I actually end up changing. And so in terms of resources, I started off, I, I have a prescription to this video resource called Boards and Beyond, and I love them. Their videos are very informative, very concise. Um, they're not comprehensive. There's a lot of things that are not there that are covered um, in first aid, for example. And so you're not going to get all these details, but it's a kind of a big picture concept video. And I bought the subscription during second year. And then I was watching some videos during the school semester because I was finding it was helpful explaining concepts that I didn't fully understand that were taught by lectures. Um, I would recommend that. I can try to see if there's like a discount link or something that I can link down for you guys or something. It's, it's kind of pricey to be honest, but I, I thought it was worth it. Um, I also got a subscription to UWorld. And so I guess to tell you what I made a mistake with resources, I just went full in to doing UWorld because that's how I studied for the SAT. That's how I studied for the MCAT in terms of is not doing any content review and then just going full in and just doing questions um so that didn't actually work out very well for the step one so far so i'm revising my plan and that's okay it's always fine to trial and error do the wrong thing and then change my mind and do something else um so yeah i went with that and i was just scoring terribly and it really honestly was because my content base is weak um so there's a lot of stuff that you learn in canadian medical schools for the first year that are very clinically focused which i think is amazing and really important because ultimately the most important thing to us is what is clinically relevant to help us take care of our patients um but there's some things that we don't learn that americans learn so they they do a lot more like the biochemistry and um microbiology which we do do some but it's not as heavily emphasized in our curriculum because we have a lot of other important things to learn and so that was something that i'm learning some of the stuff i'm learning for the first time like these rare biochemical diseases these rare congenital inherited diseases and genetics and stuff that i don't really remember so it's a struggle to be honest um the last time i did genetic some of this genetic stuff i think i was in bio 11 which i took in grade 10 so it's been a very long time since i've touched stuff like meiosis and mitosis and this cells like oh maybe i took that in first year uh anyways um but there's some stuff that are just really really old and i don't remember that well and we didn't relearn really in medical school so it's like really a lot of self-studying and reteaching and relearning and i i personally have trouble learning some of this basic science stuff because for me i like to think how would a patient present with this how would i treat them and so kind of remembering something that's kind of a bit more arbitrary like the Krebs cycle is hard for, uh, is challenging for me because I don't have something to anchor it to. Um, but yeah, I'm working on it. I gotta figure out a way to study it. Well, uh, maybe I'm gonna watch, I think I'm gonna watch more YouTube videos on people who had that experience and um, what tips they have on how to study. Um, that's why YouTube is a great resource. Um, and so basically, yeah, so that's what I did and it didn't work out. My scores were not very good. Um, and so I'm switching strategies right now. Me and a classmate, we're doing Anki and we have a target to keep ourselves accountable to do uh, 400 Anki cards a day, and which is a lot. Um, and you guys are seeing that I am binge studying like 600 cards a day to catch up because sometimes I don't meet my target. Um, but the cards I'm using are cards based on boards and beyond. So it's made by a guy named Soz. Um, try to link that below too. Um, and it's based all on the boards beyond video. And he also takes some clip his clips from uh, first aid. And so I really like them. I think there's some more famous decks out there like Zanki and Berlin Cephalon. I think I have Zanki, um, but I don't quite like it because it's a huge deck and it's a lot of stuff. And so I just, I like the Boards of Beyond one. I think I'm just going to use it because it's, it's simple. It's only, I think, 3,500 cards. I know I say only, but some of these decks are a lot bigger than ones that in incorporate sketchy medical and everything. They're just like huge. And I personally just want a quick overview of the content and then get back into you world as much as possible because i think that's what helps me stick um so that's what i'm doing i think um so i have an exam next week um and so i think i'm just gonna end up focusing a little bit on past my exam and after that i think i'm gonna do just getting through on anki to cover my content as well as i can um and then and then launch back into doing one or two 
you world blocks a day and reviewing that. I want to aim for doing two a day. Um, it's sometimes really difficult because the reviewing of a block takes like forever. Um, but yeah, so I guess the way I'm setting right now with the at the Anki process is I'm doing the, I'm trying to meet that like cart target goal of the number of cards a day. And then when I don't understand something, I will look up a video on Boards Beyond. I Boards Beyond doesn't have that that content because as I said, it's not totally comprehensive. Um, um, I look up a video on osmosis, which is also a really good resource that has a lot of different videos uh, And then they they cover the content and explain it and it's concise and I like that So I've been using that and then I really like step one med bullets I am not a very big on reading big paragraphs and so that's why I'm not a huge fan of reading step one to, uh, first aid to be honest um, So I really like med bullets because it's just bullet points and just the bare bones of what I need to know and that's like my style of learning um, and so I really like that resource. It's totally free. Um, some of the osmosis videos are free on YouTube. I think some of them you have to pay for, but some of the content that I wanted to access was on YouTube. So I was, I was happy about that. Um, and yeah, so that's how we're going and hopefully I'll keep you guys updated on how that goes. So thank you to, I'm sorry, I forgot the username. I'll look it up later. Um, who requested this video. Um, uh, let me know if anyone else is a Canadian medical student who has already written the USMLA and wants to offer tips, please leave them in the comments, leave some suggestions for not only me, but anyone else who's watching and could use some tips because I feel like there's not a lot of resources out there. There's like a really like outdated websites about how to write the USMLA for Canadians. So unfortunately we need an update. Um, anyways, so I should really get into studying now. Um, let's see, what have I done today? It's like mid afternoon in the morning. I woke up, I got a workout in today was abs and legs. I did a Pamela reef workout. Oh, it was super brutal. And then I actually filmed a video for you guys on body image positivity. I don't know which one will come first, but hopefully you guys like that. That was really, that was a really, it was a really vulnerable one to share. Actually, I, I had to spend a lot of time thinking about exactly what I wanted to say and I wanted to try to make sure it's not triggering for anyone. Uh, but hopefully so this is a video that people are going to like. I don't know. Let me let me know what you guys like. Do you guys like these like vlogs more where it's like casual and I just sit down and talk without a filter? Do you guys like the interview videos? Do you guys like the ones where I really think about a particular topic? Like, what do you guys like? I don't know. Anyways, I think it's fun. I'm having a good time with YouTube. Um, at first, I was really, really hesitant to start YouTube because I felt so unqualified to be here. Um... And then I also was a bit nervous about being criticized on the internet because that's what happens on the internet. Um, but I, I'm having fun and um, I'm really happy to see a couple comments. It warms my day um, that it's helping someone.